Namaste. Welcome to yoga, this ancient practice of coming into union, into wholeness. Yoga is from the Far East, which is a very different cultural context than here in the West. And yoga sees reality and who we are as humans very differently than our Western points of view. For example, one of the things yoga says is yes, in addition as a human to being this physical or biological form, we are each also this one presence um, that expresses energetically um, as consciousness in ways beyond material reality. And one of the ways that yoga maps these differences in terms of understanding who we are is through what's called the chakra system. Chakra in Sanskrit means wheel. So chakras are seen as spinning wheels or spinning vortices. And there are about seven of them. Some systems say there are a few more or a few less, but basically seven and they're mapped along the human spine, right? Crown, third eye, throat, heart, solar plexus, sacral area, and then down at the bottom, the first chakra is our root chakra. So in this practice, we're going to attend to and see if we can connect with our root chakra, known as muladhara in Sanskrit. Mula means root. Muladhara chakra is our basic survival, right? It's our foundation. It's the anchor into the earth. It's our sense of belonging, our right to be here, exactly where we are and as we are, right? That kind of solid root into being. Physically in the body, it's located at the very base of the spine. So underneath the spine at the bottom of the spine, the pelvic floor, anatomically it would be the perineum. It's that space between the genitals and the anus but picturing the floor of our spine. And there are a number of ways to get in touch with and strengthen and open this aspect of our being, and we'll explore a couple of them in this practice. Um, a very accessible way is through the breath. So when we sit in meditation, we're gonna play with bringing our awareness to our pelvic floor as we breathe. And I'm sure you know your anatomy, but just to give us some scaffolding, um, about when we're breathing, when we're sitting in meditation. Our respiratory diaphragm is this domed muscle, right, that separates the top of the torso from the bottom of the torso. And when we inhale, the diaphragm presses down into the abdomen. And when we exhale, it comes back up into its resting place. So on the inhale, when it comes down into the abdomen, it moves our organs, it takes up some space, right? And it sends energy and the wave of the breath down. So the pelvic floor responds to this breath passively by just widening and slightly opening energetically on the inhale. And then when we exhale, it comes back to its resting place as well. So you could picture these two things working together. So we're just gonna play with what we can observe or maybe feel as we sit and watch our breath in meditation. For this practice, I would love for you to have two blocks, please. And really important to have something to sit on. And if it could be a blanket or a thick towel, it's something we're gonna sit on in the beginning and then we're gonna roll up and use towards the end of the practice too. So get something soft that will give you some elevation for your sit bones, um, but it is also rollable. So find your goodies and then find your comfortable first seat and just arrive. And when you're ready, closing your eyes or you can just let the gaze descend and take a few smooth first breaths, just landing here in your body on the mat, letting your weight sink down into the earth. Each exhale, just letting the weight drop. And then just feel your sit bones, right? 
there are the pelvic floor, the thighs, that whole base area pressing down into the earth. And from that grounding, right, we ground first, allow the spine to rise tall. So draw in the sacrum, lift through the whole spine, through the crown of the head. Allow the eyes to be soft and the shoulders to relax. Soften the jaw. Really let the tongue be passive. And then bring your awareness to your breath. So first, just observing the inhale and the exhale. And then bringing your awareness to your belly can you allow it to be soft enough that on the inhale, the tummy slightly pooches out as the diaphragm moves down? And on the exhale, the belly naturally gently comes back in. So just notice that for a breath or two. Many of us were taught to hold our tummies in, so it actually takes a little bit of attention to let the belly go and let the diaphragm move down into the abdomen. And then on your next inhale, as the diaphragm moves down, see if you can sense the pelvic floor passively widening, expanding. And on the exhale, feel it just come back to its place of rest and just see what you notice for a few breaths. It might feel strange to pay attention to this part of our body. I think it might even be a little bit taboo, but we're fearless yogis and yoginis, and we're connecting with who we are. So just notice what it's like even to attend to the pelvic floor as you breathe. Nice, and then letting that go and just bringing your awareness to the center of your chest. Take a few gentle breaths in and out through the nose. Soft breath in, soft breath out. And staying quiet inside, just lifting the hands and joining the palms, bringing the palms into the center of your chest. Take an inhale, filling up the body. And on the exhale, slowly allow the head to bow down. And then on your next inhale, slowly bringing the head back up, releasing the hands down to the thighs and slowly opening the eyes. I hope that was interesting. We'll continue. We're gonna come down on our backs and we're gonna come into our Supta Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet together, lay your body down, let the knees open. And if you would take your hands in a triangle mudra, the downward wind mudra. We're going to place it so the triangle is right around our belly button. Let your elbows relax down. Just settle in. Let the weight of the back body drift down into the earth. Let your eyes close. Allow the knees and the feet to relax, the back of the head to root down. And then just notice where your back body is in contact with the earth. See if you can allow those contact points to deepen and widen. Like you're melting down into the earth. And then bring your awareness to your belly and just notice the gentle rise and fall of your hands with the inhale and the exhale. And maybe notice again on the inhale any corresponding 
opening at the pelvic floor and on the exhale, any corresponding release. Again, we're not doing anything with the first chakra. We're simply noticing how it responds to the breath. And then gently blinking your eyes open, releasing your hands from the mudra, bring your hands around the outside of your thighs, gently draw your knees together, the feet come flat, just take a moment there on constructive rest. Feel the weight of your back body grounding down. Let the earth have it. And then we're gonna bend the right knee in, clasp our hands in front of the right shin, and just gently start to draw that knee down towards our side, our ribs, drawing it in. Breathing in and out through the nose. And then we're going to release the clasp, raise the right foot, and you're going to slide your hand up to a half happy baby. So your hand might be outside the ankle or you might catch the outside of the foot. You can just rest your left hand and just notice we tend to often bring that knee down and outside for happy baby. If you keep it closer to the midline, so you're not going to be able to bend that leg as much. Just gently drawing the knee down. Pressing the back of the head down, maybe unfurling the spine a little bit and breathing. Maybe breathing into that hip socket, into the back of the right leg, the shoulders are relaxed down if you can. And then take an inhale here and on an exhale, just let your whole body tilt over to the right. So you're to roll the outside of the right hip, the foot comes down, the side of the head comes down. You can stack one knee on the other, just like a baby dropping down, folding in. Release your weight. Make any adjustments in your shape so it's just purely comfortable. And what is it like to rest and breathe? Take an inhale here. And then on an exhale, support yourself to come back up to your single happy baby. Release the foot, both feet down, just take a breath here and constructive rest. See if you're noticing anything different in the two sides of the body. And then hugging the left knee and clasping the shin and just gently starting to draw that knee in towards you. Maybe flex that left foot. Again, can you keep the shoulders back and down? Can you keep the face soft? And as you stay and breathe, maybe there's just a teeny bit more drawing of the knee in. And then releasing your clasp, straightening that foot up, the knee still bent. Find your, where your hand's gonna be for your half happy baby. And we're just gently drawing the knee down. We're keeping the knee close to the midline. midline. We're not opening it to the side. Shoulders relax back, heart open. Breathing. And then take an inhale here. And on your exhale, just allow your body to rock to the side. Any way your body wants to drop, what is it like just to let go, let the weight ground down, sink into the earth? I know it's not very yoga like just a flop, but we get to do it once in a while. And then slowly take an inhale here, and on the exhale, bring yourself right back up to center. Release the foot, bring it down. And just take a moment to feel the two sides of the body again. We're going to lift the right leg. We're going to come right back up into that happy baby. You're going to reach your left arm out to the side. Take an inhale here. And on an exhale, we're going to cross over. Now change hands. Reach the opposite arm out and just find a gentle twist. Again, allow your weight to relax back. Have the knees so they're comfortable, the feet might be gently flexed. Draw that right shoulder blade back and down. Take an inhale here, and on an exhale, come back up to center. Release that right leg, and take a breath. Notice what's here. And then we're gonna extend the left leg back up into our happy baby. Reach the right arm out to the side. Take an inhale here, and on your exhale, start to cross over. Change the hands, reach the left arm out, and just find this gentle twist. Still breathing in and out through the nose, slowly and smoothly. 
drawing that left shoulder blade open and back. Letting the breath fill and empty the body. Take an inhale here and on your exhale, bring that left leg back up and bend the left knee, feet down. Take a breath in constructive rest. Give your weight to the earth. And then let's hug both knees in, hands behind the thighs, and just rock and roll forward and back a couple times. Little massage for your spine. This doesn't feel good, just come on up. But for many of us, it feels really good. All the way up. And then we're gonna swing our legs around and we're gonna do some people's least favorite pose. But it's so good for our feet, which is another part of our root system. So have your two blocks in front of you because you might need them. You're gonna tuck your toes strongly, bring your big toes together, bring your knees together. If you can, bring your heels together as well. You're gonna to start to sit back on your heels. Some of you are gonna use your blocks because you're already gonna be at your limit, because a lot of us don't open our feet very often, and so you can just stay here on your blocks. Some of you can start to come up and shift your weight over the heels. So if you're forward on the blocks and you're at your limit, right, you're, you're experiencing this survival level opening of what's tightly closed. So just stay there, soften and breathe. If you're back here on your heels, you're gonna refine the pose. You're gonna bring the belly in, bring the floating ribs in, Line up your spine over your heels. Really draw the heels together and imagine there's a string pulling the crown of the head straight up to the sky. And then let's all of us just take a few more breaths, maybe close the eyes, opening the bottoms of our beautiful feet. One more breath right here. And then blink your eyes open, come forward. Oh my goodness, untuck your toes and then just tap out your feet for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then let's come to child's pose. So move towards the back of the mat, the big toes touch. And for this child's pose, hip distance are a little bit narrower, not so wide today. And then walk yourself down, really bring your hips down on your heels. The forehead comes down, you can use a block, if the forehead doesn't quite reach. And then exhale and let your weight sink down into the earth again. So the hips are heavy over the heels. The front of the skull is heavy down on whatever it's resting on. And then some deep breaths into the back body. So around the back of the hips, into the sacrum, up across the back. Each exhale, dropping your weight down. Face is soft, total surrender. Okay, we're gonna get a little more active. So keep the hips this heavy, but reach your hands forward. Reach them out of the sides of your waist. Tent your fingertips, press the fingertips down, hollow out your armpits, broaden the upper back. See if you can really find a stretch here along the side body, across the back, and then bring your hands down, spread the fingers, press the palms, and slowly press up to all fours. So we're gonna walk the knees in, so their hips distance under the knees, wrist creases right under the shoulders. Keep your toes tucked, a little bit of support underneath. And then really press through the fingers, out to the fingertips, the knuckles, as if we're rooting down through our hands. How much contact can you make with the mat? And then on an inhale, slowly start to bring the chest forward. The groins go back into cow. And on an exhale, pressing the palms, rounding the spine, draw the belly deep in. Big exaggerated cat. Inhale, slowly coming forward, unfurling, opening the front of the body. Exhale, pressing and rounding, coiling in, opening the back of the body. Two more on your own. Let the breath guide you. See what's here. No rush. Right, we don't wanna miss an inch or an instance of this being here in our bodies, moment by moment. Okay, we're gonna come forward into cow one more time. So coming forward into cow, not an overly exaggerated cow, but open heart, growing back. Stay here as you walk the hands a couple inches forward. And then see if you can keep that lift in your sacrum as you slowly lift the hips up and back, Adha Mukha Svanasana, Downward facing dog. 
So usually I invite movement. You're welcome to move if you'd like, but as soon as you're ready, if you'd find stillness and really play with rooting down with your through your hands, pressing the ground forward and down to lift the hips up, rooting down through your feet, reaching the heels towards the earth, opening the backs of the knees, pressing the upper thighs back. Strong, straight arms. Breathing, pressing. Staying so the shoulders gently start to open, staying so the backs of the legs start to open, being right here. And then on an exhale, put a slight bend in your knees, look forward, we're gonna step one foot and then the other to the top of the mat, feet or hips distance. Nice bend in the knees. And let's fold forward and clasp the opposite elbows. Drift the weight towards the balls of the feet. And let's take a few cleansing breaths. So in through the nose, open your mouth, sigh it out. Two more. And then changing the clasp of the elbows, you can keep the knees bent or you might start to straighten your legs a little bit or a lot. And then release the hands down, put a bend in your knees again if you don't still have it, weight in the heels and just slowly start to roll up. Go slowly, pressing down through your roots, the feet, starting to straighten the legs, bringing the torso up, crown of the head rises. And just take a moment right here, lift your toes, feel all four corners of each foot. Put the toes back down. We're going to inhale, reach the arms out and up. Feel that same rooting down through the feet. Strong, straight legs. Now reaching up from those roots. Equal, pressing down, reaching up. Maybe the gaze starts to rise if it's okay on your neck. Maybe the palms join overhead. Take an inhale here, rooting and reaching. And then exhale, hands come down to heart center. So I'm gonna to turn towards you, but you can stay where you are. Let's find our Tadasana. So the big toes touch, the heels are slightly apart. And again, move around a little bit on your feet so you can find all four corners of the feet. Press down. Consciously breathe, and as you breathe, notice, is there any energy movement into the feet? Drawing down, coming back up. What is your connection with the earth? And then on an inhale, we're going to reach out and up, Urdhva Hastasana. And we're just going to take the right wrist with the left hand. We're going to inhale, find length, root down through the feet as you just open the side body. So lean to the left, draw that top arm straight up and over. Can you especially root down through that right foot, although really both of them draw the tailbone long. Slowly come back up, back to the center. And then we're going to take the left wrist, inhale, reach long, root down through the feet, bend over to the right, open the side body. Can you stay even on the feet, rooting down and feel the spring of energy from the feet along the left side body. Inhale, come back up to center. Inhale, look up and touch. And then exhale, slowly swan dive all the way down. Take your time. Uttanasana. Take a few breaths here in your forward fold. And then on an inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Place your hands somewhere, you might even use your blocks if you'd like, where you can extend the spine. So you send the hips back, send the crown of the head forward. Right, we're not rounding the back, we're finding length. One more breath here, and then exhale, fold it in. Let's do that two times on the breath. So inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. And then inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. We're back in Tadasana. I'm gonna to turn towards you again. We're gonna inhale, sink the hips, reach the arms, Utkatasana, chair pose. Look down, make sure you can see your toes in front of your knees and then bring your gaze back up. If you can, straight arms right by your ears. Sit back in your heels. Draw the floating ribs in. 
Now bring the weight in your right leg and you're just gonna extend the left. Hips are even, rooting down through that right foot. Press down to come up into one-legged Tadasana. It's the rooting and the reaching. Slowly back down into your extended leg chair and then bring that left foot back, back in Utkatasana, get even in the center, shift the weight to the left, extend and flex that right foot. Root down to rise, or that bridge between the earth and the sky. Slowly coming back down, extend, foot comes down, back in chair. Inhale here and on an exhale, fold forward. Inhale halfway up, and on an exhale, step your right foot all the way back into a long lunge. Now this is a great place to use your blocks if you wanna come up a little bit to work on your alignment in your lunge. It's your choice. We wanna draw that left hip back, the right hip forward. We're sinking the hips, so you have to have enough length that the hips can come down. Reaching through the back heel, lifting the chest, weight in that front heel, breathing. And then we're slowly going to bring that back knee down. You can pad it if you need it. Just leave it right there. We're not scooching back today. One hand and then the other, right on top of this front thigh. And can you press the hands to draw the belly back? Draw the tailbone down towards the earth. Lift the front belly. Can you keep that space you've just created, but inhale. Reach the arms up, full on Janayasana. Maybe start to lift the heart. Lifting from under the arms, up past the fingertips, grounding through the lower body, reaching through the upper body, maybe the palms touch. Take an inhale here, and then exhale, come down, straighten the back leg, and you're just gonna step back into your downward facing dog. Bring the feet together at the back of the mat, and you're gonna inhale the right leg back behind you, three-legged dog. Now even the weight right to left in your hands, Plant, root down through that left foot to open that top hip. Draw that left hip under, bend that top knee to see what kind of a stretch there might be as you root down through that left foot. Then you're gonna re-extend the right leg, bring that right hip down, inhale here, and then exhale, come forward into your long lunge with the right foot forward. Again, welcome to use your blocks. So get steady, you've got your hands on the mat or the blocks for support. So you can draw that left, right hip back and the left hip forward. Hips are sinking, lift the sternum, reaching back through that back heel, rooting down through that front heel, breathing in and out through the nose. And then slowly bring that back knee down, pat it if you'd like, and then one palm and then the other on that front thigh. Press the thigh to bring the belly back. Draw the tailbone down. Lift the heart. Keep that space as you inhale. Anjaneyasana. Lifting the belly. Lifting the heart. Maybe starting to lift the gaze. Rooting down through the groundedness of the lower body with the lightness of the upper body reaching. Maybe the palms touch. Inhale here. And then exhale, hands come down to frame the front foot. Straighten the back leg, step the left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Continuing on, inhale, reach. Exhale, slow swan dive all the way down. Inhale, halfway up, long spine. Exhale, step the left foot back, long lunge, and move your right foot a little bit to the right so you have hip distance between your feet. Firm that right hip in, and inhale, come on up, crescent, and then let's bring our hands down to our hips. We're gonna bend that back knee, the left knee, so it's hovering right above the mat, so you can get close to a right angle on this right knee. Root in that front heel. Firm both glutes, and then you're gonna reach the arms up, Inhale here and on an exhale, it's a little lat pull down. Inhale, light arms. Exhale down to the rooted lower body. Inhale, reach. Exhale, out and down. And then inhale, reach the arms and the back leg. And then exhale, hands come down, frame the front foot. Step back, downward facing dog. 
Bring the feet together at the back of the mat. Inhale the left leg back behind. Even the weight in your hands, right to left, and then root down through that right foot to open up. Top hip stack, bend the top leg. Keep firming that right hip under. See what's here. Then re-extend the left leg. Left hip comes down. Inhale here, and then exhale, step forward, long lunge. Move the left foot a little bit to the left. Firm that left hip in. And when you're ready, inhale, come on up. Crescent pose. Hands to the hips. And then let's bend the knee, that back knee coming down, just to hover. See if you can engage both glutes. Draw the belly in. And then we're going to inhale the arms up. Exhale, cactus pull down. Inhale, reach. Lat pull down. Inhale, grounded and reaching at once. Exhale, pull it down, and then root down to inhale, extend the arms in the back leg. Exhale, hands come down to frame the front foot. Step the back foot in, feet together. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. So far, so good. Here we go. Inhale, reach. Exhale, leading with the heart. Straight back, you're welcome to put a bend in the knees all the way down. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, find your plank. Bring the feet together at the back of the mat. We're gonna bring the right knee down, untuck the toes. Back foot flat, slightly turned in, arch in line with the right toes. And then you're gonna walk this right wrist right under the shoulder, in line with the shoulder, and then about an inch forward. And then you're gonna play with opening up into your Vashisasana. And then we're gonna reach that top arm over. Can you draw the tailbone long underneath you? Root down through that right hand, draw the right shoulder blade in. Now stay just like this, but you're gonna cat, you're gonna draw the belly in, fold forward, even the head bows down. Can you expand the whole back body, breathe into the back. Slowly come back through center, get stable, and then slightly, it's a little bit of cow, opening the front body, draw the tailbone. Can you even just ener energetically extend the front body? Breathe there, come back to center, look down, left hand comes down, step back, your back in plank, feet together, left knee down, set the back foot down, walk your left wrist in and forward, and then slowly open up. Vashisthasana on the knee. Playing with balance. And then we're gonna reach that right arm straight out overhead. So first find length, ground through the back foot, ground through the left hand. Turn your right tricep down. Now draw the belly in, start to bend forward just a little bit, it's a little bit of cat. Even the head comes down. Can you poof up your upper back, see how much space and breath you can find in the back body? And then slowly coming back right along the midline. Get stable here. And then just a little lifting of the heart, reaching back. Keep drawing the tailbone down, breathe into the front body. And then slowly coming right back down the midline. Look down, right hand comes down. Step back, you're in plank. You're gonna come an inch forward, knees down, and then come all the way down to the earth. Untuck the toes. We're gonna come up on our forearms for sphinx. So get the shoulders right over the elbows, forearms parallel, press the hands, really straight legs, draw the tailbone long, and just feel the rootedness of your hands, your forearms, your pelvis, the tops of your feet. Breathe. And then slowly come down, plant your hands by the sides of your ribs, Press up to all fours, tuck the toes, slowly press back, downward facing dog. Next, exhale, empty the breath, look forward. Step one foot and then the other to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Tadasana. Really nice. So let's come to the center of the mat, finding our Tadasana again, rooting down through the feet from that root rising up, crown of the head reaching. 
and then extending the arms out to the side. We're gonna take a wide stance, three and a half to four feet, get the ankles right under the wrists, draw the tailbone down, feel both of your feet, even weight. So we're gonna turn the right foot out parallel with the side of the mat, the back foot slightly in, and today I'd like you to do heel to heel. So line up heel to heel so we have lots of room for our pelvis and our pelvic floor. Again, can you get even in both feet? And as you start to bend that right leg, can you keep even in both feet? We have a tendency to shift all the weight in the front foot. So the weight's going in that front heel, but can you keep some weight in that back leg? And then look down, make sure you can see that right big toe inside the front knee. Press in that front heel, draw that right hip back and in, draw your tailbone underneath, relax the shoulders. And then again, check in with both feet, ground down, press them down, isometrically draw them towards each other, draw the tailbone down, lift the crown of the head, roll these left ribs back, sink a little deeper, Virabhadrasana two, and then we're gonna stay here. We're just gonna lean a little bit forward, bend that right arm, forearm comes down on the thigh. We're gonna inhale that left arm up, turn the palm forward, this modified Parasakonasana. So really bend in that right thigh, weight in that front heel, and then press your forearm into that thigh so you can roll the chest open, lift the belly, root down through that back foot and extend up through those top fingertips. One more breath right here, and then inhale, slowly come back up, straighten the front leg, turn that right foot in. We're gonna go right to the other side, so turning the left foot out. Back foot slightly in, and again, line up heel to heel. Press down through both feet, draw the tailbone down. Inhale here, and on an exhale, keep the weight in both feet as you start to bend that left knee. Notice if you're wanting to pitch forward or if the weight wants to come forward, can you keep the torso uh, vertical? And then look down, make sure you can see that big toe from the left hip back and in. Roll these right ribs back and then bring your mind to the feet. Press both feet down, isometrically draw them towards each other and from there draw the tailbone down and find the vertical of your torso right between the two feet. Virabhadrasana two, breathe. Maybe a little deeper for a breath. Now stay right here. Don't come out of the pose. We're just gonna lean forward, forearm on that front thigh. Maybe you can bend a little deeper now. Reach that top arm up and over, palm forward. So first just find these lines and then you're gonna press the forearm down to lift the belly up, lift the heart, anchor in that back foot to pull along the right side body, reach out to those top fingertips, one more breath, and then inhale, come back up to your Vera two, straighten the left leg, turn that left foot in, and then we're gonna come about a third of the distance in with our feet parallel. Get your feet nice and parallel, root down through all four corners of each foot, Take an inhale here, lift the heart. And on an exhale, starting to hinge at the hips. You can bring your hands down on your two blocks. You can bring them on the mat. For some of you who have more openness in your hamstrings, you might start to fold in. Bend elbows, bring the wrists back under the elbows. Prasarita Padottanasana, so wherever you are. Active feet, draw the arches up. Hug the outer ankles in root down through the feet and pull energy up from the earth up into your hips and then it length come out lengthen through your spine out your head see what's right here one more breath and then wherever you are on an inhale come halfway up bring your hands to your hips elbows in and then slowly press down root down through the feet to come all the way up Yes, and then bring your feet together and we're back in our Tadasana. Okay, so let's work, since we're working on rooting down, let's work on our Vriksasana tree pose. So hands to the hips. You're welcome to come off the mat if your balance is easier on a floor or go to a wall. Whatever you need, we're gonna root down through that right foot, all four corners of the right foot. 
let's start with a little kickstand. And let's learn something about rooting and balance. So as you're here, just blink your eyes closed for a minute and then blink them open. Isn't that amazing how much vision helps our balance? Stay there or bring your foot to the calf. Check out, you might wanna stay here, or if you wanted to come into full tree, you grab the ankle and you stand up on the inside of the right thigh. Really press the foot, foot into the inner thigh as you press the thigh back into the foot. Get your hips even, notice if this left hip has come up or back, and then bring your hands to heart center. So explore that right foot. Imagine there are tendrils down into the deep, moist, fertile earth. From there you rise up tall, strong standing legs, and your choice to stay right here, or maybe you're rooted enough to reach out, to branch, to express, to reach, and just notice that connection between the rootedness, the heaviness, the foundation, and then just the lightness, the lift, and how we need and we are both at once. So see whatever is right here, fullest expression, and then slowly come out of the pose. Back down to earth with both feet. Shake it out. Let's see what Vriksasana is like with our other root going down. So first Tadasana, both feet, then really root through the left, all four corners. Start with that kickstand. Maybe close the eyes again for just a moment. We can say, thank you, eyes. Beautiful, blink the eyes open. So this is tree, you could stay right here. This might be what you want today, or you might want the calf. This is another wonderful version. Or you can reach down for that ankle, stand on that inner thigh, and then take a moment to sort your hips, right? This is part of our foundation. The foot's the first foundation, that strong left leg, and then the evenness of our hips. And then we press our palms together into the midline. And you can feel how even that's another kind of rooting creating a solid base, strong standing legs. From the root reaching with the crown of the head, making a choice if you also wanna reach with some limbs, some arms. Can you stay rooted, solid in the lower body? And then just find some lightness, some reach, more expansive energy in the upper body. And just be here with your breath, fullest expression, and then slowly let it go. Right foot comes down, shake it out. Okay, so here's where I would like you to take your blanket or towel. We're gonna to come into a malasana. We're gonna give ourselves some support. Malasana is a squat. We're gonna give ourselves some support under the heels. So I'd like you to roll up your blanket or your towel. I'll show you from the side. We're gonna place it so that we can place our heels, hips distance on that. So get your feet parallel, and then start to squat down. Even if you're someone who can do this with your heels flat, today I'd like you to keep your knees closer together and we're really gonna work on finding that plumb line. So everybody just try it with this, it's delicious. So here you are, you can keep your hands resting on your thighs, or if you're ready, you can bring your hands to heart center and just notice, are you really pitching forward? So you're just gonna play with bringing yourself upright. Again, notice if the knees are used to tracking out, see if you can hold them together. This is gonna keep our pelvic floor open. And then just settle in for a few breaths, close your eyes. And again, see if you can see that connection, feel that connection between your diaphragm and the pelvic floor. It's very subtle as the breath comes in and the breath goes out. And see what, note, what happens as you stay and quiet in this very rooted, grounded position that's so good for our body in so many ways, this deep squat. Just a few more breaths, savor whatever is here.
and then gently blink your eyes open, just taking your surroundings. And then we'll come forward off of our blanket. Move that to the side. And we're gonna come into our Virasana. So that's usually one or two blocks. The blocks can be at any height. The ankles hug the block. And then we sit back with our sacrum. So it's super solid. So it's as solid as sitting on the ground. So again, it can be a taller block. It can be two blocks. If you could bring your knees as close to as together as possible, they may not come together. Let the inner thighs drop down and then just play with that plumb line, the straight spine. And as you stay here, I'm just gonna show you the mudra. We're gonna take the Shakti mudra, which is a very grounding mudra. Hello, coming closer. So you can see my hands. Uh, Shakti, the divine feminine energy. So you'll take your hands, fold your thumb in, and you'll take your index finger and your middle finger and you'll just fold it over your thumb. Looks like that. And then you're gonna take the ring fingertips and the pinky fingertips and meet them along with the knuckles that you have bent over your thumb. I'll just show you from all the sides. So this is the Shakti Mudra. Very grounding, it's very good for insomnia, good for the nervous system. So in your Virasana, bringing your Shakti Mudra and just resting it in your heart, allow the shoulders to relax, allow the eyes to close, and just drop into yourself right here. Riding the breath. Face is soft. Relax the jaw. Notice how the energy is moving in your body. Just check in. Temperature, vibration, your state of being. Right in these asana practices, we move into a pose and then we observe so we can learn does this pose feel good? Does it feel helpful? How does it inform me? Where is it challenging? Right, we're learning about ourselves through this shape-shifting practice. It's all a grand experiment, being present with what is. Just a few more breaths, I'll be quiet. See what's right here. And keeping your eyes closed, just let the mudra melt and the hands just rest on the top of the thighs. And then when you're ready, gently opening your eyes. So we'll come off our block. We're going to come down on our backs. Let's have the block near. Setting up for bridge pose. We've got our feet, hips distance in parallel. The knees are bent. Just let the weight of the, of the body sink back into the earth. And then take a moment, lift your toes, explore your feet. Can you find the big toe mound and the baby toe mound, the inner heel and the outer heel? Set the toes back down and then privileging the inner foot, slowly press down and lift the hips. Lift the pelvis. And then we're gonna bend the elbows and press the elbows down and use that to even lift the chest a little bit more. So from behind the heart, you might draw the shoulder blades underneath you. Keep your knees parallel. We're not letting them come out. Stay with your arms like this if you like this, or you can reach down for the sides of the mat to draw the shoulder blades under some more, or you can roll one outer shoulder and then the other outer shoulder underneath. Clasp your hands, interlace the fingers. You might even press the palms together. Now really press down through the feet. You're standing on the feet. As you stand on the feet, you can help the pelvis rise and up to the mid back, maybe even up behind the heart. Keep your gaze soft. 
and then staying right here with your body, we're just gonna release the hands, reach them overhead, flat palms down. Now from the very tip top of the spine, slowly uncoil one vertebrae at a time until the sacrum comes down. Oh. Reach the arms out to the side and just take a breath here and constructive rest. Again, what is it like to yield our weight to the earth? Then take an inhale here. And on an exhale, we're just going to let both knees come down to the right. So roll to the outer right foot, the inner left. Just a gentle loosening for the sacrum. You could stay right here, or you could reach overhead, grab a wrist. Maybe find a stretch, pulling the left hip down and pulling the wrist up and away, drawing the tailbone under. Ooh. If you're stretching slowly, release that. Arms come back to the sides. Bring the knees back up to center. Take a breath. And then another inhale here. And on the exhale, just let the knees come down to the left slowly. Outer left foot, inner right. This might be perfect. Or you might want to add a little stretch to the upper body. Find that opposite wrist. Draw the hips, the pelvis down and away. As you pull the side body, reach the wrist up. If you're stretching, reach the arms back out to the side and slowly bring the knees back up to center. Take a breath here. And then we're going to draw both knees in. Give yourself a little squeeze. And then let's do our full happy baby. We've earned it. So lift the feet, flex them. Hands are outside the ankles or the feet. Now let the knees come out and down. You can stay still or you could rock side to side. Ananda Balasana, blissful baby, right? In the East, yogic philosophy, from the very first chakra, right? Our, our sense of belonging, our right to exist, all the way up to the right to experience bliss, the bliss of our being. Just even being in the body and the breath, what's right here? Slowly coming back to center if you're rocking. Slowly releasing the feet, letting them come down to the earth. And then if you would find your block, we're gonna slide it the long, low way under our sacrum. So press the feet just enough that you can slide the block in. Again, you wanna get it right under the sacrum so you can have the natural curve of your spine and you could feel nice and grounded. See what that's like. You could stay right here, or you might lift one knee and then the other. And if you feel secure enough and you'd like, you can extend one leg and then the other straight up if you can. Not ramrod straight. There can be a little softness in the knees, but not forward, not back. Your arms can be down by the sides, or you might reach them straight out from your heart. I like that. And draw the shoulder blades underneath the back of the heart. And close the eyes. Drop into your breath. See if you can bring aware your awareness to your feet. The soles of your feet as you breathe. You notice any opening or tingling, if they feel alive or not so alive. Just see what's right here. These feet, which usually support us endlessly without complaint, for these few moments we get to support them. Deep breaths into the belly. Again, you might notice if and how the pelvic floor responds to the breath. Soft in the eyes, soft in the throat. One more breath right here. And then gently blinking your eyes open, bending one knee and then the other, bringing one foot down and then the other, 
root down through the feet, press just to lift the hips enough to slide the block out. Allow the sacrum to come down. Take a breath right here. And then setting up for your final pose. So classical is with the legs long. The feet are about hip distance. We let them flop open. You might want to press the, the back of the heels down, lift the hips, and just draw your tailbone long. So you have a long tailbone underneath you. Arms can be out to the side, or they can be a little bit away from the body. But find some external rotation in your shoulders. So you might want to press the back of the head down, draw the shoulder blades slightly under so the palms can come up. If you have any discomfort in your lower back, you can bend the knees, widen the feet, and let the knees knock in. You could always come back to our Supta Baddha Konasana, but then I would like you to have your blocks under your knees. You'd be here for a few moments, and I think some support would be helpful. Or you can roll up your blanket and place it behind your knees as you lie with the legs long. That gives a little bit of ease to the lumbar spine. So any last minute wiggles, if you want to cover yourself, Cover your eyes, certainly close them. And then let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Fill up. Sip a little bit more at the top. Hold it there. And then open your mouth, sigh, let it go. Shavasana. And then staying just as you are, but finding a conscious breath. Feeling the weight of the back body sinking down into the earth. And the lightness of the front body 
joining the air. And here you are right in between. And then if there's some small movement, bringing the body back to life, maybe a stretch of the arms overhead, and then bending the knees as you're ready, reaching the right arm out overhead and just letting the knees fall gently to the right, rolling over, resting your head in your right bicep. Just pausing for a moment right here, eyes closed, staying deep inside. And then pressing the left palm down, keeping the eyes closed if you can, just finding a comfortable seat, ending as we began. Let your sit bones find the earth again, rooting down. And from there, the spine gently rising tall. Noticing the breath, noticing how the body, the being feels after the practice. And then drawing the palms together, moving them into the heart, dedicating the merit of this practice to all beings, all beings on earth, and in the greater universe. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you for practicing with me. Be well.